Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I'm going to go over an ASVAB arithmetic reasoning test. First thing I'm going to notice on this, 36 minutes for 30 questions. That means I got to go quick. Uh, you need to know the math, but more importantly you need to know the tricks, and I'm going to go through some of those tricks. I'll probably break this up into a couple of different videos, just for 30 minutes. Uh, it's kind of a long video. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll kind of point out ideas and t uh, tricks to do better on this exam, but what I would do is I'd pause the video, do the problem before I do it, and then watch how I do it. I will take more than a minute per problem as I explain it, but the technique I'm showing you should be about a minute per problem. And remember, the hardest problem on here is worth the same as the easiest problem, so don't race through a super easy one you could get right to get to a hard one that you might get wrong anyway. So you do need to know the tips and tricks to do well and go quickly through a standardized math test. However, you don't want to go too quick and, and screw it up and make a simple mistake. All right, let's jump in. So a car is towing 12 miles to the repair shop. It is towing 350 per mile. How much does it cost? So I know I need to go 12 times 350. I could do that long multiplication, or I could just do 12 times 3 is 36. 12 times 4 is 48. So it's somewhere between those two numbers. The only thing that's close is that one right there. All three of these other ones don't even make sense. So I jump right to answer C. Problem number two, pause the video, do this, and then watch how I do it. The sum of two numbers is 70. So I have these two numbers right here. X plus some other number is 70. One number is eight more than the other number. What's the smaller number? So Y has to be eight more. We could just quickly pick in values and try it out. 31 plus 8 more, 39. Well, that is actually 70. That one works right there. Let's try answer B. 33 plus 8 more than that. 33 and 8 is 41. And I can see that's 74. It's going up really quickly. Um, so it did, if it didn't work out to be the first one through that trial and error, I could have seen, like if I started at the last one, that it was way too big, and then I probably would have jumped to the first one that was a lot smaller. Number three, a sales manager buys antacid bottles by the gross. A gross, you need to know that word, a gross is 12 times 12, uh, 12 dozen or a dozen dozen. He goes through three bottles of antacid every day. How long will a gross last? So again, a gross is 144. I have to do 144 divided by 3, because that's what he goes through per day. Again, I could do that long division, or I could just say, well, this is pretty close to 150. 3 goes into 150 about 50 times. Is there any of them that are close to 50? Only one of them is close to 50, and it's that one. These don't even make sense. They're not even close at all. Okay, number 4, Jenny's test grades are 93. 89, 96, and 98. So I have t four test scores there, 93, 89, 96, and 98. If she wishes to raise her average to 95, what does she need to score on her next test? So this is going to be the fifth test. All five of these tests added up together, divided by five, is going to equal a 95. So let's take a look at these tests right here. Um, if we add these up right here, we've got 3 and 9, 12, 12 and 6, 18, 18 and 8, 26. Carry the 2, 11, 2 and 9, 11 plus 8, uh, 19, 28, 37. So I have 376 divided by the four tests he's taken so far. Four goes into 37 nine times to get 36. 37 minus 36, one, six. Four goes into 16, four times. So she currently has a 94 average. What does she need to bring that average up? Well, if it's going to be 100, uh, that's going to be way too much. It's obviously not going to be a 95, because that's not going to bring it up. It's going to have to bring it up one point over five values, right? So that's going to be a 99. And the way I came up with that 99 is I said I'm going to have to add one point divided by that 5. So it's got to be 5 points more than the 94. And that's where the 99 came from. If I had time, I could plug 99 in here. 
add these five values up, divide by five, and see that it'll be a 95. Just one way to do it, probably multiple ways to do it. Number five, again, pause the video, do the problem, and then watch how I do it. A waitress earns an average of 12%, so that's going to be 0.12, of the cost of the food she serves. If she serves $375 worth of food in one evening, how much money in tips can she earn? I'm going to skip down and just look at this uh, values right here. 12% is 0.12. It's about 10, 10%, but it's a little bit more than 10%. So 10% of that would be about 38. So it can't be that one. Uh, can't be that one. And then 38, so I got, I'm just going to round it to say 38 bucks for 10%. And then I'm going to add another 1% and 1% to get the 12% on there. So I'm going to add another 4 and 4. It's going to be like 45 bucks. So 45 bucks is going to be it. If I had more time, I could multiply it out. I would take that 375, multiply it by the 0 0.12. 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 1, 14, and 1 is 15. Carry the 1, 6, plus 1, 7. Placeholder, 1 times 5. 1 times 7, 1 times 3, I add straight down 0, 10, 14, 15, carry the 1, 45, my decimal's over 1, 2, my decimal's over 1, 2, and I can see it's a 45. Number 6, how many square feet of carpeting are needed to carpet a 12 by 12 room? So I have a room that's 12 by 12, 12 times 12, right, it's going to be 12 little boxes by 12 little boxes, I multiply that to find area, and I get 12 times 12, 144 square feet. Number seven, carpet stain protector costs 65 cents per yard, per square yard. How much will it cost to apply the protector to a 16 foot by 18 foot carpet? So the first thing I notice here is we're talking about different units. I'm 16 feet by 18 feet. Um, I could probably just turn that into yards right there. It's not going to work out to be an integer, but I think because there's so much varied in these answers, I'll probably be able to round and get an answer because none of them are that close. So I'm going to do 18 divided by 3, 3 feet per yard. 18 divided by 3 is 6 yards. 16 divided by 3 is 15 in a little bit, so or 5 in a little bit, right? So 16 divided by 3 it's going to be five in a little bit. So this is about, about five yards, a little bit more than five yards. But if I do five times six, I get approximately 30 yards, right? So this is going to be approximately 30 yards. It's going to be a little bit more, but we're going to stick with that. And then 30 times 65 cents, so it's going to be less than a dollar. The only thing less than a dollar that's even going to work up here is going to be 2080. So through approximation and multiple choice, I could kind of eradicate answers that don't even make sense. And there's usually only going to be one that makes sense. And that's how you do these tests a little bit faster um, because it is timed and you don't have that much time. And it's a non-calculator test as well. The whole reason they call it arithmetic reasoning is how well you could kind of run those numbers in your head. That's what they're checking. So the way to get good at running those numbers in your head is you got to do a lot of practice. So again, pause the video, do the problem, practice doing it, and then watch how I do it. Maybe you'll pick up some techniques. Number eight, a printing plant that produces baseball cards has an overhead of $6,000. So whether they make one or none, it's going to cost $6,000. It costs 18 cents, so 0.18, 18 cents for every card they make, and they sell for 30 cents. How many cards must a printing plant sell each month to make a profit. So they're going to make 12 cents profit because they have 30 cents is what they sell for minus 18 cents. So they make a 12 cent profit per card. So if they sell only one card, they got to pay that $6,000 minus 12 cents. And they're asking for a break even point, right? So I'm going to have to figure out uh, a 12 cent profit, how many cards I have to make to pay off that $6,000. So that $6,000 is divided by that 12 cents. This is a decimal here, so I got to go over 1, 2, 
and that decimal is here, one, two, right? So I'm doing 12 in a 60 is five. I could actually stop right there and circle C because I know it's got to start with a five. Um, that'll give me 60, bring down the zeros, and I could see it's going to be 50,000. Correct answer, answer C right there. So you've got to sell 50,000 cards at a 12 cent profit to pay off your $6,000. Number nine, Joe received an hourly wage of $8.15. His boss gave him a 7% raise. How much does he make per hour now? Well, he's got to make more than $8.15, 7% more. So that doesn't make any sense. That's really a reading comprehension. That's probably, that's actually probably seven cents times that. It's probably that. So that's how much his wage goes up. Um, $13.85, that doesn't make any sense. So I got to pick between these two. I can multiply it out. Or I could just go 57 and 15. That's going to give me 60, 72. It's going to be this answer right here. Or we could multiply that out to 8.15 times 0.07. Right? This is 7% converted to decimal over 1 over 2 to give me the 0 0.07. Multiply this together, 35, carry the 3. 7 and 3 is 10. Carry the 1, 56, 57. Then I got a placeholder. These are all zeros. I add together five, zero, seven, five. And then right here I'm over one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That works out to 57 cents is the profit, right? Because he goes up by 7%. So 57 and the 815 is 872, so my initial good educated guess was correct. All right, let's take a look at number 10 here, and I think I'll end it right here. Alice leaves her house driving east 45 miles per hour. 30 minutes later, her husband Dave notices she forgot her phone and sets off after her. How fast does Dave travel in order to catch up with her three hours after he leaves? With Alice three hours. So, she goes 45 in an hour. I mean, she's going to go 45, 45, 45, right? And then 30 minutes more because, uh, which is 22.5. So let's see if any of these make sense here. So he, Dave, is going to have to go this total number of mileage. What is that? 90, 135. We got 135 plus 22 and a half, 157.5 in three hours, right? Because she has a 30 minute head start. So in three hours, Dave has to go 157.5. So we're going to divide that by three, three and a 15, five times, zero, seven, three and a seven twice. I could probably stop right there because there's only one value. That starts with 52, but we'll keep going. Six, one, five, three and a 15, five times 52.5. So Dave has to travel 52.5 when she is traveling 45. Kind of a hard problem because you've got to really decode the words. So she leaves, starts traveling. 30 minutes later, her husband leaves and he travels for three hours. So he only travels for three hours, but she started 30 minutes earlier, and that's how I know she traveled one, two, three and a half hours at 45 miles per hour for her total distance. And that total distance, Dave has to make up in the three hours, and that's where I get the 52.5. All right, I'll do some more of these problems in a future video. I'll probably split it over three videos, just the first 10. I uh, hope this is helpful. The more problems you do, the better you get at it and also the faster you get. So hopefully some of these tips and tricks will help you kind of speed through the exam. Don't go too fast and get careless and start making careless mistakes, but design systems so that you can kind of eliminate answers that don't make sense and go to good answers. Okay, thank you for watching. Any questions at all, please post them in the comments.